Hey, what's up, people? Welcome to our live stream. Today, we're going to be announcing the winners for our March Art Dare, and we're also going to be announcing what the May Art Dare is. And if you would like to learn how to turn your artistic weakness into your strength, check out artprof.org, where we have lots of free resources, tutorials, critiques, art dares, pro development, and all that cool stuff. So, Clara, why don't you get us started on the uh, submissions? The March Art Dare asked people to create a four panel comic that explored a birthday party they had attended or had of their own in the past. And the first artist we're going to take a look at, and I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, Elazar Crescent. And they say, I wanted to work on this art dare to practice doing a more comic inked style illustration. I used reference photos of myself and my stuffed animals, use transfer paper for penciling, inked with a brush and pen on Bristol paper, and lastly, I painted it with watercolor. Well, we're looking at some close-ups here, but really, this was not <laughs> a good birthday experience. <laughs> Jordan, what do you think about Elazar's take on this? Because some people think, oh, birthday party, yay, but that's not always the case. You know, it it's... First off, I really love this piece. I think it's so unfortunate, the storyline. Um, like, just that last panel, I think, says it all. That black background with the the pink and all the animals, even their expressions are all depressed and sad. It just makes me want to go give give you a hug. And, but it, it looks really, really great. I enjoyed reading it. And, um, yeah, this is phenomenal stuff here. Well, Alex, color plays such a big role in the storytelling. What do you think Elazar is doing with the color from the first panel to the last one that is telling that story? Elazar is doing it so smart of using bright, friendly, happy, approachable colors in the first panel, and then they fade and get darker in tone and a little bit more, I'll say, violent as it transitions into the red, becomes much starker and much more dreary. And it's very smart as the color and value are teaming up in the same way. I love this too, Ginger is that says, exercise of traditional media. Ginger says, so many of the birthday ones were sad, surprisingly. Why do you think that happened, Jordan? Because I had never really assigned this prompt in a class I taught before. And I, I was surprised too, that a lot of them were actually deeply emotional. Uh. I, I mean, the closest thing I can think of is I think we tend to remember the events that are particularly emotional in our lives. And um, when one thing that, and when it's a day that's supposed to be happy and filled with joy and cake and friends and gifts and all that stuff, and it happens to be absolutely miserable, it sticks with you. Um, there's been a couple of Christmases in my life that were absolutely terrible. And so those days stick in my head just as much as some of the better ones. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Alex, what about this moment between the second and third panel where we see Elazar pushing outside of the comic panels? It's a really cool way to play with the media of using the hourglass of symbolizing time and jumping us through those panels because this zigzaggy form is not typical of a comic setup. So that hourglass is really doing a good job of guiding our eye about where to go next. All right, the next artist we're going to look at is Maya Work. And she says, the birthday party I illustrated was not so much tragic as it was awkward. I attended the party a few years ago. I wasn't particularly close with the birthday girl. I remember hanging out with the birthday girl's pets most of the night <laughs> in order to avoid her mother. And Maya decided on a particular color scheme between the blue and the yellow. She wanted to try something new has been inspired by other comic artists who use two-tone color palettes. And Maya says, I like the idea that even if you attend an event that isn't fun, you can at least use it in your art and turn it into a funny story. Well, what do you think of the way Maya told the story, Jordan? I think this is hilarious. I remember when I first read it, I loved how it didn't, it's sequential, but it felt like there was a significant amount of time passing. Like. I feel like I'm dealing with the boredom and the uh, and the awkwardness of the party with the with you as you know as the the person who was actually there, 
Um, and so all these little moments, especially that last one, the one kid threw up and I'm not drawing that, that just had me cracking up. It felt like reading a Calvin <laughs> Hobbes uh, comic strip for a moment. Well, Alex, what do you think of Maya's line work? Because the style is pretty exaggerated, but there is almost a logic to the way that Maya employed the lines. The line work in it is beautiful. I love the way it's emphasizing the texture, be it of clothing, of the dog, uh, the furniture. And the stylization of it, you said it, there is a a rule to it. It's stylized, but it's not distorted in a way. And I think it really helps to set the mood of it's not as active and punchy and engaging with colors. And these muted yellows really help emphasize that boredom. I like the last panel. I mean, first of all, it's hilarious, <laughs> the text. But also, why do you think it's sometimes more powerful to not show Jordan what's happening i think i think sometimes it's nice to get a break from having things spilled out for you all the time i think it's i think it's the same logic when it comes to uh, horror films or anything like that you always are more scared of what you can't see it's always the anticipation of when the monster is going to show up or what's in the darkness or whatever and i kind of get that same type of feeling so when you have this particular moment of a kid throwing up you can just use your imagination and put whatever you want for that little kid to be doing if you run to the bathroom or is spilled over on the couch or whatever. It just makes it more fun and imaginative that way. Well, Alex, there's that phrase, truth is stranger than fiction. And I think this is, I, I would never occur to me to make up a birthday party like this. <laughs> Manette says, I really love how everyone's styles are Oh, I really love seeing how different everyone's styles are in these shares. I know, isn't it remarkable that we can give one prompt and get such a diverse range? Alex, I know for you, probably like me in art school, it's really fun to see multiple takes, right? Yeah, for me, that's both the most important and the most fun part of an artistic community, be it art school or art prof itself that we can only think of our way to solve that problem. And it's great and helps flex that creative muscle to see all the other myriad ways to address the same issue, either type of story or medium or style or what have you. All right, the next artist is Sal DeVito, who I believe is live here in the chat. So please say hello, Sal, if you can. Sal says, my motivation was remembering my ninth birthday when I came home from school, my sister picked me up, spun me around and accidentally hit my head on the banister and my dad's reaction, <laughs> reminding me of the nonchalant craziness that could happen in my house, especially around birthdays. Well, this is quite a dramatic moment, Jordan. What do you think? I love moments like this. I feel like every person has experienced some kids doing something really ridiculous and the parent is just not even phased by it, just just saying don't don't do that ever again i saw a video of a kid jump off a fly stairs thinking he was batman that's how the dad reacted and that's just <laughs> that's the kind of the vibe that i get from this <laughs> where it's just like please don't i'm, I'm so tired of this. <laughs> just get through let's just get through the birthday please <laughs> yes sal is here mm -hmm. live with us in the chat i'm so glad you could join us sal well, Alex, what do you think about the way Sal drew the pose with the sister and holding Sal as a nine-year-old? It's great because it's so clearly stylized, and yet it's a pose that's so familiar to any of us who were kids with an older relative or adult who would just kind of like, and woo, like it's, <laughs> it captures all of it that you need especially when the moment is included. Um, just depicting it so simply, and then that sudden jolt of the stop as they hit the post is a great exercise in conveying movement through still images. <laughs> and this is so great. Sentient charcoal. I remember seeing this one in the Discord. It made me chuckle. 
well, why is that cool, Jordan, that people get to preview each other's art dares throughout the month? I mean, I think it, it gives people a sense of people's lives uh, and sort of like a little sneak peek, uh, if you will. I, I'm, I'm sure everyone knew we were going to do a stream like this, but the fact that this is sticking in everyone's minds after such an extended period of time, I think is really saying something about how Sal decided to depict this story in his life. It, it clearly resonated with a lot of people. I love how the dad is just so stable and like, it's fine. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like as a parent, you just get to this point where you're like, you're alive. It's fine. Like, <laughs> you just don't have the headspace to react <laughs> in any other way. <laughs> so really nice work, Sal. Okay, let's take a look at Cynthia. And Cynthia says the title of this piece is, quote, the cake is a lie because my partner actually does not eat cake and we don't eat cake on his birthdays. Instead, we usually plan a little vacation where the landscape has a lot of nature, even if most of the days we want to relax and not hike. If we do go on a hike, it's on a flat trail with mushrooms. All right, so here's somebody <laughs> for whom cake is just not that important. What do you think about the format of this, Jordan? Because a lot of people do the standard, okay, rectangle, square, and Cynthia's cut out the shape of this cake. I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever seen a comic done like this before. I'm very, you know, the, you, the panels are very readable, they're clear, but the overall shape of it being in the form of a birthday cake and with the candles that are lit on top of that is incredibly creative and I've never seen a solution quite like that. And I'm really, really impressed by how it doesn't feel confusing or to read, but it feels unique. It feels um, interesting and um, just really fun. Uh, and it gets the birthday vibe across completely. By the mm -hmm. way, everybody, Cynthia is here live with us. Oh, the raffle's making me tired. <laughs> Cynthia is live with us here in the chat. And Alex, what do you think about Cynthia's technique? Because we have some really beautiful line work, but there's also a lot going on with the watercolor. Yeah. And I think you already said it. I think it's the line work that's making it work. How the difference between the line weight, between what is the cake, what are the panels, and then what are those details? In keeping the watercolor co colors, wow, say that one time fast, <laughs> keeping the watercolor colors a little muted and toned down than it helps to make everything work as separate pieces in their panels, but also cohesively as a whole. Yeah, like Sal says, love the layers of cake being the panels. Bestowing the brush, yes, this composition is really awesome. And Ginger says that they really like the icing swirls, which are so cute. It's such a nice merge of line work, but also pretty painterly strokes that are happening in the colors and it holds together really beautifully. Lisa is asking, are photos collaged in two like the knife? I'm not sure mm -hmm. Cynthia is probably going to have to answer that. It looks like a real knife to me, but I could certainly be wrong about that. And Jordan, what about color? Because some people are talking about the color scheme. Yeah, the colors are really fun. Um, I, I think the cool blue and the green, I think those are really adding to make it seem like something that's inviting. Um, and it also just reminds me of birthday cake. Whenever you see a birthday cake, unless it's chocolate, usually there's bright blues, bright reds, you know, yellows and all that type of stuff. And they're putting it in here very well. Um, I also just want to call out how the drawings are curving with the the cake in perspective i just think that's such a cool detail <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. yeah so cynthia says no collage i cut out the artwork okay so i guess that is a real knife <laughs> i love it it's a great little thing that you slid into the comic which i think is a lot of fun all right the next artist we're looking at is carolina and Carolina says, I wanted to exaggerate the nervous and awkward feeling. And I thought that black ink is gonna be perfect for that. It's dramatic, goes well with the comic format. 
It's really excited, so I kept the sketches simple, exploring lighting and color composition. I'll definitely be making more of these in the future. Well, we have another awkward <laughs> birthday party moment. <laughs> what do you think, Alex? I think it's beautiful. And I love how the transition from blue to that yellow in the last panel really comes alive. For me, that yellow captures that, embodies that awkward energy very well, that kind of tension in the air. It's really well done with the ink and wash. Well, let's look at some of the sketches that Carolina did. Jordan, I would imagine that these played a major role in Carolina articulating the final comic. Yeah, definitely. I mean, for, for those of you who have ever done thumbnailing or maybe you're part of the brainstorming track that we uh, that we put up, thinking about the, the composition and the, how you want to tell the story is all incredibly important, even for the pacing, because you don't want to say too much too soon. And, or, or say some say not not say enough or say too much. You want to have the right amount of balance just to get the right mood across. And I think the thumbnails really helped. I think you picked some really solid uh, images for us to uh, for us to look at. I also think comics are so much more complicated, and people don't realize what they're getting into when they design a comic. I know that happened to you recently, Alex. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> it's like, oh, this will be fun. And then two pages in, I'm like, wait, I should probably have planned this. <laughs> <laughs> and I am still planning it now, by the way. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> and Alex, how about the text? Because there's some text here. Mm -hmm. For example, God, this is awkward is really small, but normal is not only very bold, but it's also vertical text. What do you think about some of those choices? I love the use of the text because it conveys to me as a reader perfectly that it's that interior monologue of the character. And you can see that it took thought, like it's in the sketches that you've done of how am I going to work this text out? And I think you landed on a really solid solution. Because yeah, I think a lot of comic artists forget that the text is a big part of every panel if you're including it. Elazar, who, by the way, we featured earlier in the stream, says, I like the big black outline in this one, too. It makes it moody. Yeah. Why are those lines emotional, Jordan? Uh, I think part I think part of it is just um, when we think bold, we think, you know, strong emotion. We think dramatic. I think that's one of the reasons why things like Marvel or DC Comics is so popular because it has so much drama associated with their shadows. And you're doing the same basic thing here. And and you're also using really strong shapes like the hair and the shirt. Um, and so our eyes are just naturally drawn to that. We have some prizes to give out everybody. The honorable mention goes to Elazar. Congratulations, Elazar, on your comic. Woo. I think it's a brilliant piece. It's very emotional. I think it pulls you right in. It holds together visually. Great work, Elazar. So wonderful to see your work. And the prize goes to Cynthia for the birthday cake panel comic. Congratulations Ooh. to everybody who participated. We love seeing what the community is doing with these monthly art dares. All right, let's talk about the May Art Dare. The May Art Dare is gonna ask you to create artwork with home art supplies, which oftentimes are hiding. Sometimes you don't even know that something could be used for your artwork. And Jordan, I don't know that you're a great example of uh, experimentation <laughs> with different media. <laughs> My thing is I have experimented a lot but I have found the ones that I do like, and I stick to them. If, if you, if this were a conversation from five, six years ago, you wouldn't be able to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I put the wrong staff on the stream because Alex, you're the same way, right? Yeah, I'm just like, hey, I found gouache, and I could feel like I could spend the rest of my life, and I, I'm still learning about it. So I'm just gonna stick on this this little boat. <laughs> But this is so important, like Jordan said, of like we've both done this period of high experimentation, and it can be so useful to getting you to think outside the box. 
Yeah, and by the way, you don't have to only use home art supplies. For example, this is somebody who got a bunch of leaves and they cut them up and eventually made this collage from the leaves, but they also did a pass with paint. So if you want to combine art supplies with the home art supplies, that's totally fine. You just have to have one item in the artwork that is actually in your home. And this, this also includes like if you have backyard or something, that's totally fine. And this is just so much fun. And actually the reason we put together this chart, it's a page on our website, the link is in the YouTube video description below, was because of the pandemic. Because there were so many art teachers, they couldn't give their kids their art supplies. And that's sort of a big deal when you teach studio art. And so I thought, hey, let's come up with some cheap materials that are typical everyday items that maybe people can play with. And I think it's hard to do stuff like this sometimes because there's, there's no rule for how you paint with makeup. Like, Jordan, what do you do with this? <laughs> You are asking the wrong staff member again. Okay. <laughs> I know nothing about makeup. <laughs> I, I <know> don't. <laughs> well, the stowing the brush says I cut up some romaine lettuce the other day and really wanted to stamp with the cross section of it. Sometimes the most That's simple cool. things can be done very beautifully. You You don't have really... You don't always have to have really expensive art supplies. I mean, Alex, I feel like the art supply store, it's only a small percentage of the shopping I do. I assume you're maybe the same way. I don't know. Yeah. And honestly, maybe it's just because I'm hungry right now. But my first thought is like how you could use food. And it doesn't mean you can't yeah. eat it afterwards, but creating something visual with that. I was very surprised actually that balsamic vinegar is really good for painting. I was sort of thinking, ooh, oh, maybe yeah. tea and coffee and tea and coffee are fine, but ooh, balsamic vinegar worked out so well. It had a lot of pigment. So a lot of this is not just using the supply, but saying, hey, would this work? Would that work? And a lot of these things may not work so well. For example, mm -hmm. I really thought matcha powder, ooh, it's green. It, it did not work that great. It is an option. It's just really, really light. So a big part of this is searching for those different supplies. Ginger says we can use anything that's not a typical art supply. Yes. So if it's a tube of gouache, sorry, Alex, <laughs> you're not eligible yeah. for this art dare. But if it's hair dye, <laughs> dandelions actually work really well. They've got very bright mm. yellows and you'll have a lot of fun. So look at our chart. And that will give you some ideas to get started. We do have an art dare leap, and that is to use four different home art supplies. You can put them in four different pieces. You can put them all together. Totally up to you how you all want to do. By the way, if you do the art dare, hang out in the Discord with us. Jordan, why is that helpful? We have one of the best art communities on the internet, I think. And <laughs> When you guys are in the Discord constantly posting your art, encouraging others, encouraging us as the staff, it's always really, really wonderful. And um, it just encourages us every single day. So you got to join if you're not a part of it. Raven is asking, does this art dare have to be on paper? Nope. In fact, you could make it 3D. I mean, I had examples where somebody made a sculpture out of q-tip so really use whatever you want and and have fun because i think it's a great chance to do that mm -hmm. and i mean even outside the box we got somebody suggesting you could use your hair <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> you are brave okay. i wouldn't do that i have a whole lot of it so maybe that's why <laughs> I was thinking because I trimmed my beard the other day and I could have used the clippings to make a little little something. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you want to tag us on Instagram and use hashtag artprofdare so we can find your submission. But we also have a Google form, which is on artprof.org. If you're not on social media, you can certainly use that. And last reminder, everybody, it's the last day to pledge for our spring raffle. 
we really, really, really need your help. Like, I don't think you all understand how much we need your help because we don't have a lot of revenue because all our content is free. And Alex, in retrospect, that was a really dumb idea. <laughs> D- dumb and necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure about you know, that? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Like, because I think for all of us, everyone here has been, everyone watching has benefited from Art Prof being free and accessible to y'all. And it's, um, as the kid who grew up watching PBS and every year I would always complain that Sesame Street was interrupted by pledge season, but as an adult, I understand why it works. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much, Amanda, for the super sticker. And by the way, if you would like to enter right now, during this live stream, give a super chat and we will definitely count that as an entry for the raffle. And we have all sorts of fun things, different ways you can enter the raffle. Amazon wish list. Jordan, it takes a lot of gear to run what we do on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Me. Yeah. Even just just my setup, there's lamps and there's uh lights and all this stuff there's a box right here right there those are boxes <laughs> a couple of things like we just have a lot of things to uh that we need to use for this and we can only do it with your help um if you guys want to keep our prop going you guys got to support that's just the that's just the end all of it the way i can say it is that no matter how much gear we have something is always breaking jordan wasn't it your mom who says there's always something. That's how I feel about our equipment. <laughs> yeah, there's always something. Everything goes great, but then one day something breaks, something tear, tears up. So it's always something. <laughs> and sometimes a lot of the gear we need is really boring. I think, Alex, you have a surge protector on your Amazon list, but why does that matter? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's not fancy, but it's specific. And for me, it's <laughs> from living in smaller apartments when all of the lights and cameras that we need for our prof turn on all the other lights in the house get a little bit dimmer <laughs> so just those little things everything from more ink to make work with to surge protectors everything can help us do what we love to do lisa is asking does the bnh list update once someone buys something Actually, we had to take off the B&H list because I thought it functioned like a registry, but apparently not. So I actually took all the B&H items and I moved them over to Amazon. I, I can't, don't understand why they don't have a registry at B&H. That's crazy to me. B&H is like the photo video version of Amazon. It's an amazing site, but apparently their wish lists don't function the same way. So it turned out that we had to move everything to Amazon. But a lot of that is on there. Bestowing the brush just says, can you tell us how to access your Amazon wish list? If you go to the raffle page, the link is in the YouTube video description below. Click on that. And if you scroll down, there are links to everybody's individual Amazon wish list that you can check out. Clouds M says tech is huge when your organization is online. And I think sometimes, Jordan, we shouldn't make it look so easy because I think people just assume we just show up and it's not like that. You know, we can't help it that we're just smooth like that, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> but for real though, we, we do we do need help. Um, you know, you know, there was um in the Incredibles, if you ever watched the movie, apparently if you listen to behind the scenes stuff, apparently if you zoom out just a little bit, you see all the wreck of the stuff it took to put the movie together. I feel like that's probably the equivalent of this. Like, just outside these frames, a lot of stuff that goes on. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think a lot of people don't realize that the vast majority of our budget comes from our supporters because we want everything to stay free. And that means not being at the mercy of sponsors. I'm really mad, actually. This one sponsor that we'd had for a long time just dumped us. I'm like, thanks. So that's the issue is that sponsors and deals, those are never a guarantee. And you're the only ones who we can hopefully count on. And it's still not where it needs to be. I still stress about it. And 
Alex, I think you all know how precarious our funding is. Yeah, and it's just the kind of thing where we we do it as long as we can do it. And <laughs> I like this phrase of, you're thinking about it? Don't think about it. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to keep going. But that's why I love periods like this of like the raffle where we don't have to make it a daily thing of every single stream asking. We just like, okay, cool. This is that burst. And we're trying to get a lot of support. Up your Patreon if you can. Um, support in any way you can. Super chats. And even sharing this, commenting in the video, if you really can't do anything financially, that's a huge help to us. Yeah, people don't realize that when you share our stuff on social media, that is impactful. Can you explain why, Jordan? I remember there was a time maybe about a year ago where um, we, we had a tick, one of our first TikTok videos and it gained a thousand subscribers on YouTube because of that. And that's literally how we, I mean, everything, like someone said earlier, is online for us. So it's YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and social media platforms. So the more you share, the more we'll be able to help people and share all this information about art. Thank you so much, LSR, for the super chat who says, I have never gotten any honorable mention before, so that means a lot. I hope this counts and helps your funds. Thank you for the appreciation, Art Prof. Absolutely. We were so excited to see your piece, Elazar. <laughs> and looks like we have some comments, like Blue Daisy says, too bad you don't qualify for some kind of government grants or something. Well, the problem is we don't fit in any category because all of the grants, they're either for education, major public school <laughs> district, or the filmmaking grants are for independent documentary filmmakers there just aren't grants for youtubers unfortunately and it's very hard when you're doing something that just doesn't fit neatly into any type of category and seven angelic says comment on the video share and like it'll make the algorithm pay attention it may not seem like very much Jordan, I think sometimes people think, oh, it's not going to make a difference. It does. <laughs> yeah, we, we have to please the algorithm. <laughs> like we are at the mercy of the algorithm no matter where we go. So <laughs> all the little things, which doesn't take a lot of time or a lot of efforts, literally, you know, a click of your, your mouse or a thumb tap, <laughs> you know, all those little things that seem insignificant to you really helps us out. So Cloud says, true, one organization I was looking at joining filed under for-profit just to get government assistance. It's all a mess. Well, we've had people ask us in the past, why are you not a nonprofit organization? Our prof is an LLC. We're a limited liability company. We're not a nonprofit. And the reason why is running a nonprofit is so expensive. All the legal fees, Running them is so incredibly hard. The LLC was the best choice for us because it was within our means financially, and it really was all I could handle. And people say, well, if you become a nonprofit, you can apply for grants. I'm like, it's not guaranteed I'm going to get those grants. And so there's a lot of things we just can't do because it's just either too big of a gamble or it's likely to fail. I mean, I've read some depressing statistic. They said a lot of nonprofits are gone within three years. And that scares me. <laughs> yeah. By the way, we have these email newsletters that are exclusive content. Jordan, you write one. Tell us about what people get in those email newsletters. Yeah, so when I put out my newsletters, uh, I send it. I submit a piece of artwork that I don't show anywhere else. I don't post it on Instagram or my YouTube channel or anything like that. No, no one else sees it, just you guys. And then I write a little letter, explain a little bit about the process, and sometimes maybe give you a little insight into my life a little bit. <laughs> I write one too. It's very long and very wordy, so you may not <laughs> want to subscribe to my newsletter if you don't like reading. Hopefully some of you do value what I write, but I think keep in mind that this is a community that helps each other. Alex, can you talk a bit about that? Because just so many online groups, 
it's post and run or it's like me 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 and i i like to think that we are not like that yeah i think because we've and it's funny it's that kind of great thing of like when <laughs> as teachers when you have good students it feels easy where we've attracted a really good group of artists that are encouraged about sharing their work and helping others but the system of not just sharing and posting and getting critiques for your work but also commenting on others and as you're on our discord for a longer period of time you recognize people and their work and their growth and it's really cool to fill that void that's otherwise hard to find in art it feels very isolating otherwise ginger says i love reading the monthly newsletters it's exciting to get fun ones i know for once it's like an email that's not i don't know some spam crap about something i do not need <laughs> so this is a real email which is nice and seven angelic says emails are lovely we enjoy them like getting a note from a friend so yeah thank you for those of you who do support us because you are so incredibly important we hope that you will join alex and i in the discord right after the stream we will be in the post live stream stage channel and these are so much fun because you get to talk to us on voice. You don't have to, you can come, listen, hang out, but we love hearing the voices from the community. So we would encourage all of you to join us there. Remember, last day to pledge, couple hours, and I confess I'm sweating a little because this raffle is important for us and we mm -hmm. need to get the funding to keep things the way they are, which is 100% free. I sweat a lot about how much longer we can keep that up because we do have a lot of expenses that need to be covered to serve the community. So please pledge to the raffle. You just have a couple more hours to do it and I want to be able to sleep at night. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.